Pescador, southwest Colombia, one of the country's poorest regions, it's part of the Cabullal watershed. Traditionally a one-crop community based on cassava, farmers here are taking part in an experiment to diversify production without resorting to illicit crops like coca or migrating to the city. Rodrigo Vivas is director of CEPASLA, the Inter-Institutional Consortium for Sustainable Agriculture on Hillsides. Formed in 1993, it works to protect the environment and reduce poverty in the Cabullar watershed. Its key partner is Azo Berserka, a local organization that brings together watershed communities. Projects are formulated with the communities in meetings, and what CEPASLA does is to develop the project to find resources with the supporting agencies and coordinates the work so that it is more efficient. With cassava cultivation the biggest single cause of slope erosion, CEPASLA encourages farmers to switch to a variety of crops including plantain and to chicken and dairy production. Rodrigo visits the Azamakal Women's Collective that now grows plantain on these steep slopes. Unlike cassava, where the earth is churned up by ploughing before planting, with plantain you need only dig one hole. Green barriers prevent erosion, but that's not all they do. This titonia holds the soil. You can cut the leaves for use as compost. By composting and giving up pesticides, they save money and produce a totally organic product. Rodrigo makes his way to another farm, used as a model to teach dairy farmers how to divide fields into small sections where cows can graze and grass is left to pasture. It is possible to improve the fields with technified grass, like those we see here. And we mix them with a plant like this one here called Aracos pentadon. It is leguminous. Realizing dairy products could reduce their dependence on cassava, 25 farmers banded together with Sapasla to build this factory. They're now one of the biggest milk producers in the country, turning out 500 liters a day. The group has worked together for six years. We can compete within the business national and multinational as well because we offer a natural product at a price farmers can afford. Unlike cassava, where market prices fluctuate, milk offers a far more stable income. But Sapasla's initiatives don't stop with the obvious. They've also branched out into flowers. Los Adiala Rosas is part of another women's cooperative that's commercialized this native flower. Within the flowers, the one we like most was the Anthurium, because it's a flower that doesn't need a large plot of land, it doesn't consume too much water, and it doesn't attract bugs so much, and so you don't have to use so many chemical products. This one will be open and ready to sell. In total, they produce over a thousand flowers a month, all sold in the nearest city of Popayan. Once established, the nursery more or less runs itself. All of us do the cleaning of the greenhouses and the maintenance of the flowers. In total, we spend up to six or seven hours per month. In 2002, Sapasla, like the other projects featured, was awarded an Equator Initiative Prize for promoting sustainable agriculture. It's given them a much needed boost. The most important thing is that we were able to bring resources to invest in the community's different projects. One of their proudest achievements is a radio station. Not surprisingly, it broadcasts farming advice. 
The environment is our reason to be. We teach it through the radio with continuous messages. 